the Hall of Justice. Mutated by Toxic Waste. All right, we're back on Talking Comics, and we're here with Inyaki Miranda and Caitlin Kittridge, the creative team behind Coffin Hill. So the book launched just this week, obviously. Uh, how's the reception been so far? Uh, it's been great. Um, I, I've actually been blown away by how positive um, people have been about it and how well received the book has been. Like, it's it's great to get so much feedback from so many people who told me they bought it or put it on their pull list or just let me know that they enjoyed it. And I mean, as a writer, that's really the best thing you can hope for when you have a book come out. So I and I'm sure Inyaki is happy oh, yeah, too. Yes. I've been reading. Last night I got stuck in Philadelphia for four hours, and I started reading all the reviews because I had nothing else to do. It was. A, it was amazing. I, I'm, I'm really happy with the, the reaction so far. Yeah. So how does it feel to be um, part of the, the Vertigo tradition now? Um, it, it's amazing for me. Um, I started really getting into comics when I read Sandman and Hellblazer back as like a freshman in college, which was like over 10 years ago now, probably. And to think that like 10 years, if I had told myself back then that 10 years later I'd have a book coming out from Vertigo, I would have been like, shut up. I will not. You're on crack. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Get away from me, crazy lady. <laughs> but it, it's been awesome. Like, I can't really articulate it beyond that because I'm still so overwhelmed. The book just came out two days ago, and it's my first comic. I actually got my start writing novels, so the whole comic thing is really new to me. And to start with Vertigo is really crazy, <laughs> frankly. So. Yeah, and to me, I think it's the best place to be in comics mm -hmm. because it gives you freedom to experiment. At the same time, it pushes you. And at the same time, it it, uh, it teaches you. I mean, uh, I have the huge luck of working with Shelly Bond, and it's, it's a great ride because I learned so so much in so you know so so few in time that I'm just so lucky. And that's yeah. Um, so I, re I read the, the the first issue and it was I loved it. I love the the, the horror angle of it. So is it, some horror something that you're you're drawn to? Is something that is that your is that your genre? Oh, absolutely. Um, I, I started off um, when I was writing. I started off writing um, paranormal romance, so it was a lot, um, a lot more relationship, a lot more sexy, uh, a lot less really delving into like the psychological and you know, and thematic mm -hmm. aspects of the horror. But um, and then I, I when I my uh, second novel series came out, I did something that was definitely a little more straight, like pulpy kind of fantasy. There were like you know rogue magicians, demons, that kind of thing. And then I really feel a Coffin Hill. I fully made the jump into horror, which is something I've always wanted to do. Like I'm a total like old school horror movie fan I have been since I was a really little kid like I used to be the kid that wasn't allowed at sleepovers because I'd scare the other girls too much with, like the, the when we would all tell ghost stories I actually got banned from somebody's house once because I scared, I freaked her out too much during a sleepover but, <laughs> yeah so it's been it, it's really kind of been like a lifelong ambition of mine to work on a story like this and I feel really fortunate that I have the opportunity now and there was a question for me or about, no? about horror, but uh, is, um, oh, is, yeah. oh, oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> and, <laughs> I mean, I'm a big fan of every kind of horror. From and, and in some way, the atmosphere that we're getting Coffin Hill, I think, is a mix mix of so many kind of horrors movies, like you know, from The Shining in in some ways to series like The Killing and also Sam Raimi. Mm -hmm. And there's, it's a great mix where, that we're getting into this book. So, yes, I'm, I'm a fan, and I always be a yeah. fan. Yeah. What is, uh, what, how is your working relationship like? How do you guys operate together as a, as a team? I, I think we, I think we do great. Like, I, I mean, it, we were up to like the third issue now, as far as the art and the story goes, and. Um, yeah, we, we email tons, and I mean, like, I'm I'm not a very artistic person at all. Like, I'm definitely a writer, and I'm not very visual at all. And it blows me away that Nyaki can take, like, a three-sentence description and turn it into, like, this amazing page with, like, all this, like, depth and detail and all this stuff. Like, I never would have thought of in a million years. So I feel it's very collaborative, like, in the mm -hmm. best possible way. Like, I, I feel like we're, we're very even collaborators, and um, he can be a bit of a diva. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No, yeah. I'm I'm the nice one and he's the diva. No. <laughs> Yagi, what about you? Yeah, she, well, she she threatened me to punch me. <laughs> so, I'll say whatever you want. <laughs> no, I mean, she gives me a script with so much atmosphere and the dialogues are great. It's it's so fun to to work with her. It's, it's we don't have to speak that much because uh, I think we connected in in you know, in the artistic level, without even speaking. Yeah, I don't feel like I have to micromanage him at all, which is great. And because I'm, a, like I said, I'm a brand new like baby comics writer, and I would not know how to give that much direction to somebody. So <laughs> I just like I don't know. I I, I can draw a stick figure. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, it's funny from, you know, from Stephen King to Joe Hill to H.P. Lovecraft, New England seems to be a very horror-filled place in, in literature. Is there a reason why you picked a New England setting? For your your story, um, I'm I'm from there. I grew up about 45 minutes from Salem, and I uh, I, uh, I I've always found it to be a very kind of spooky place compared to the rest mm -hmm. of the country. And I was really influenced by people like Stephen King because you know he's everywhere because yeah. he's a New England writer who writes about New England, the scary New England. And um, I, I just think it's such an old place compared to the rest of America that I think there's kind of a, an, an eeriness to it that really draws people who write scary stories, mm -hmm. atmospheric stories, like, you know, psychological horror, that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, you've got, like, you've got, like, all the ghost haunting stuff, the historical stuff. You've got, like, the Mohawk and the Algonquin legends mixed in there. Mm -hmm. And just, it's really just, like, the perfect setting. Like, you couldn't ask for a better setting. And since I grew up there and I was bombarded with, like, New England history and Salem Witch Trials history and all that, like, all through school, um, it just, it just kind of came naturally. Like, I've always wanted to kind of do justice to... Having such a great, such, having such such like you know a great firsthand experience to turn into a horror story like growing up there. So right. I'm just glad I got the chance. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what does it like for you to when you recreate when you're when you're when you're drawing, you're creating a, a, a real area like New England. Do you look at reference? How do you go about creating it? Oh yeah, I got a lot of reference from from her uh. from when we were like uh, creating the visual development of uh, uh, the series. Mm -hmm. And and there also there's a lot of creative license where you create a nanosphere that's only for the book. You know, New England, I, I've never been there, but it's, it's famous around the world. I mean, you know what's New England. So sometimes it's just what you what you sense in your mind and then you draw something different, but it, the sense is there. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what, how I feel about it. Great. And can you guys give us any, any hints of what's to come uh, in Coffin Hill? Um, lots, lots more um, terrifying revelations for Eve, the heroine. Lots more complications for her. We're gonna delve much deeper into her relationship with her family and her family secrets and how they impacted this evil that she set free in the first issue. And we get to see how exactly it's been poisoning the whole town of Coffin Hill and what effects it's had as the story rolls on. So I can't say too much more, but issue three is one of my favorites, and it's really exciting. So definitely. Definitely looking forward to that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, she knows more than me about the story, so <laughs> I'm blind right now. I'm in the middle of he's issue only, three. He's only so <laughs> she doesn't want to tell me four, that. So. Okay. <laughs> Not much. All right. Um, well, uh, Inyaki Miranda and King Pedro, thank you so much for talking with us on Talking Comics, and we look forward to seeing more Coffin Hill. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you.